Mm. <coughs> yes. Good. <coughs> mm. Let's get some of this tasty ice water. <sighs> That's where it's at. People like tea, people like coffee. But we have plenty of yum yums in the form of good, high quality H2O. And plenty of high quality education from the young Socratics in the form of Odyssey, the invention of science. Welcome back, attractive and well educated watchers, to Odyssey, the invention of science. Last time we left off, we were learning how individuals in the past came to the conclusion that the Earth is not flat. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's an important thing. Uh, darn, we forgot to do the thing. No, we, we did not forget to do the thing. It just, it just said no and did the thing anyway. Uh, so yeah, last time we left off, we had learned how the ancients... Uh, philosophers and the individuals who science comes to revere as the giants that we are standing on the shoulders of came to the conclusion that the earth is not flat through the Aristotelian model we believe or no not the Aristotelian sorry we're Anyway, there's going to be a lot of reading on this one, and if you're excited to see how we do everything, remember to like, subscribe, do all those supportive things that we love to see on the channel, and uh, yeah, consider going on down to the description and pledging even just a dollar a month, because every dollar helps. We have, uh, no, we, we definitely did not choose to do that. Okay, how about we try this again? We have a journal entry that we picked up. <clears throat> oh, that is the opposite of what we should have done. Yes, the rotating bridge. Oh, it was the Aristotelian model. Yes, okay. Yeah, Aristotle's physics. Uh, Aristotle's physics seemed to make sense, but, you know, it puts the, you know, so, so we... This is how we're going to keep on going. On top of the tall peak of the wretched mine of wretched miner is where the army built its observation post. Dad says it's a shame he believes the Caribs built their own observatory here, but all evidence of it was destroyed. He knows because the army photographed and stored what they found here, and Dad got to see their records. They didn't do a good job by archaeology standards, but he said it was amazing they recorded any of it at all. Uh, for being soldiers in the middle of a war. Uh, they, they were actually... It, World War II was the time when soldiers were getting cameras and stuff because people wanted to know what was going on. You know, First World War was so... Uh, you know, so driven by propaganda and, and, you know, Johnny Get Your Gun and people didn't really know until they got there. And, and World War II was the first kind of war that we were able to, like, have wartime journalists out there and... And, uh, uh, Jim Bob from, you know, Alabama, who's just serving his country as an infantryman, might, might actually be serving his country as a guy with a camera and, uh, a, a pistol, or what have you. You know, if he's real good on it, and he really has a passion for it, that could have happened. Anyway, uh, Dad thinks a lot of evidence ha was already destroyed by pirates in the 17th century, though. They set up a base and used this peak as their own lookout. That was good luck because the pirates also wrote about their time here, and much of this survived in lock boxes and glass bottles the army found. Dad said it's hard to learn about the Caribs directly because they didn't leave much behind that could endure for centuries. Even though the pirates destroyed so much, their logbooks preserved more information about the Caribs for Dad than if they had never come. The door to the army observatory can only be locked from the inside, so the door was left unlocked when the army abandoned the islands after the war. 
Inside the structure has three floors connected with ladders going up through trap doors. Three floors, trap doors. Almost everything has been stripped out except for some tables and chairs. The top floor has two different exits leading outside. One of them is through a lookout room leading to another rotating bridge, which seems to connect to the other exit, and that seems strange. It might be just to give soldiers access to the two zip lines connecting to the other two pieces of Wretched Miner. Sid says he wants to fix the zip lines, but Mom says later. The bridges have to come first. The best part is we get to sleep up here tonight. I told Dad I couldn't think of a direct way to prove the island was, er, the earth was round. He said, a dinner plate is round, but flat. You mean round like a ball, and so a sphere? He hadn't talked about this difference before, then he pointed to the quarter moon and said it looked round, but it was a disc or s but was it a disc or a sphere? I said it looked like a sphere, but I couldn't prove it. He said that was reasonable, and that the ancient people worked it out with observations over longer periods than just looking up in the night sky one night. Oh, sorry, we're adding words too. Watching the moon go through phases from a waxing, growing crescent up to a full moon and then back to the waning, shrinking crescent. <coughs> We're probably going to be coming on to our clues here. Moon phase is nice. Ancient Greek philosopher Parmen Parmenides. Par Parmenides? We really tried, and we'll have to say this again, so... Uh, Parmenides, probably. We're gonna call him that. That one sounds suitably Greek. Parmenides. Parmenides noticed a pattern. The bright part of the moon was always in the direction of the sun. You can see this best during the day when the moon is a crescent and the lit side is always on the side of the nearby sun. What caused this pattern? The explanation of Parmenides came, he came up with, uh, is that the moon didn't cast its own light, just reflected sunlight. That's why the bright part always faces the sun. Nice! We d had never actually processed that. That said, it's even more evident that the sun is traveling in empty space on the other side of the earth at night. If the sun were hidden inside a boat or a dragon, it's because the Chinese believe that, or believed that back in the day. You know, now that now China's a spacefaring society, they, they know better. Uh, its light couldn't shine on the moon. Dad agreed. He also added that one could easily prove the moon had to be a sphere. He pointed up at the quarter moon and said that there was no way you could shine a light on a flat disc and have it look like that. That was hard to wrap my head around. Even if you shone the light at the right angle, there was no way the light up... Uh, no way to light up only part of... Uh, only a crescent part of a disc? Sorry, we're have well, this is this is early morning. Seriously, Dad said the best way to prove it was to try. So if I have time tomorrow, I'll construct a physical model and see. That's what we do in science. We don't just make wild and spurious assumptions about the universe. We make physical models. We make models and we test our hypotheses with real, verifiable, recordable, and physical evidence. I twisted my ankle, helping fix the lower bridge. Guillaume carried me up to the into the bunker, and Sid got some ice from the boat. Mom says it's pretty bad, and I need to take it easy, probably for days. Now I'm stuck here with an ice pack. Well, guess you're gonna have no other choice but to construct that physical model, right, kid? Mom, Sid, and Guillaume are back fixing the bridge, and Dad's working here in the bunker, carefully photographing and documenting everything, looking for anything else left behind that might tell him something about the Caribs or the Pirates. It doesn't seem like there's much around, though I think he just doesn't want me to be alone up here. I got out my project supplies and made models to test what Dad and I talked about last night, and made two moons, a flat disc from an old round piece of plywood, and a sphere one out of a styrofoam ball. My project supplies are half stuff you get from craft store and half salvaged from the junkyard near my house, including a bunch of these cool crank wheels that make gears and sliders go back and forth. I mounted- oh, so we're looking at her- we're actually- this test is actually looking at her project to see how the moon is round or not. Okay, okay. Fully lit, never partial, correct moon phase. 
Uh, sliders go back and forth. I mounted a light on a track to act like the sun between the two moons so I could crank it forward and backwards. I could have just held the models up to the light, but I wanted to be precise, which is how you should do good science. You want to be precise. The spherical moon shows all of the different phases the real moon does, but the disc moon, as the real moon does, uh, but the disc moon is only, sorry, that's a very close, which is totally how children write, so, uh, the r disc moon is only ever completely dark or completely lit with no phases in between. This proves it, the real moon has to be a sphere. Not only that, but I realize the only way to get crescent or quarter moons like we're having at night now is for the sun to be farther away than the moon. It's still at least an hour till dinner time. I don't think anyone will come back till then in the meantime. I think I'll paint these models to look like the real moon. Maybe I can bring it to school next year for extra credit. Good idea, kiddo. Uh, yeah, so now we're gonna get to our clues. I showed everyone my model, especially the setting where the sunlight, sun's light barely hits the flat moon but still lights it all uniformly, proving that phases are only possible if the moon is a sphere. But I didn't see how this helped prove the Earth was a sphere, too. I asked Dad, but instead of answering, he told us how the pirates conquered the Caribs on the Wretched Islands. The pirates, even with guns, couldn't invade because rope bridges made them vulnerable, but they had something better than guns, they had knowledge. According to their astronomical navigation charts, the lunar eclipse was due November 6th, 1672. Pirates told the Caribs that if they weren't welcome, the moon god would get angry and rise dark and red. Christopher Columbus tricked a different tribe in the Caribbean this way long before, and they hoped it would work for them, too. The Caribs didn't believe the pirates, but when the day came, the moon rose dark and red. All the Caribs panicked, except for one. The Carib astrologers said it had nothing to do with the pirates. The moon was just in the Earth's shadow, and would soon emerge. The Carib astrologer explained how moon phases show moon doesn't make light, it just reflects sunlight. Oh, he was a smart guy. And how the moon must be a sphere to have phases and a crescent moon is only possible if the sun is farther away. Okay, okay. And with the moon and sun on similar paths, the moon can sometimes block the sun. Why else would solar eclipses happen only during a new moon? And when the sun is on the other side, the earth can get between the sun and moon and its shadow would fall on the moon. Why else would lunar eclipses only happen during a full moon? Nice. The Carib astrologers said that uh, said that's what was happening and it would be over soon if they waited but the caribs were too afraid and didn't believe their own astrologer as the night continued and the moon stayed dark red they gave in months later the wretched islands were a thriving pirate base with no free carib people living anymore there anymore oh that's no fun but now we know oh, whoops now we know how this doodle works so indeed we're gonna look at this. Okay. Uh, are we supposed to turn it? Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay, we were just turning it the wrong way. All right, so now we're looking. The flat disc is on the left side, as we can see, and the sphere is on that side. Oh yeah, and indeed, it the flat disc, it does not matter. It's not lighting up until it lights up. And as we can see, the sphere... Boom. Now we see the flat disc. Nice. So what specifically... Sorry, we were so busy uh, orating. Oh, come on, that's not what we asked. Let's just... Look specifically at the hint that we were given, because we kind of forgot. Uh, barely hits the flat moon, but still... Okay, yeah, okay, that's what we thought, but let's just go to that. Yeah, barely hits the flat moon, but still lights up everything, yet we don't even get a full half moon here. Block this constellation with the sun upstairs oh that's cool all right so it's the we think this is gemini the two holding hands that's what it all looks like to us but 
it's been forever, even though we grew up in all that kind of, you know, family and stuff. Alright, this box. Oh! It is another journal. So we're gonna have to go upstairs. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, nice. It is, it is definitely, we believe, Gemini. Yeah, that's Sagittarius. Yeah, that's the twins, definitely. Oh, well, geez, we, we think that, <coughs> we believe that we have uh, something here. Good. Two seconds, let's just get a delicious uh, thing of water. Good stuff. <clears throat> Today, w wait. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Today was a busy day. Mom and Dad decided to make the bunker our base instead of the boat. Everyone but me spent the whole day making it secure. I don't know why they're worried about security. There's no one around, and it's illegal for anyone to be. Oh, you sweet summer child. What do you know of security? Haha. <laughs> the door to the outside has a big deadbolt, but Mom wanted a way in for emergencies if someone inside needed help. Mom used steel plates left over from the army to build a big box like a combination lock where you had to line up the slots and five hidden plates to slide the interior deadbolt across. She wrote numbers on the plates that you can see through the holes in the front. She set our, th the combination to be a combination of all of our birthdays, but Sid and I have already decided we're going to change it. We might even put s something different instead of numbers like pictures for fun. We already did this one. Inside the ladder up from the entrance is permanent, but the two leading to the upper floors are retractable. They drop with a lever, so we definitely have another one to go through. Uh, to make the bunker safer, Mom blocked the lever to the top floor with another makeshift combination lock, but four separate... Oh, okay, okay. But four separate ones, since that was easier to make with the ports she found... Uh, parts she found lying around. She put letters on each of the four wheels, and the combination could be a word, but Sid and I are going to change these two into pictures as soon as we decide what to use. <laughs> oh, jeez, these kids are great. On the top floor, opening the two exits is done with a heavy crank that actually turns two wooden discs as tall as the room until doorway holes appear so you can leave. They were set so you can only open one at a time. For some reason, Mom said it was probably army logic, probably, compartmentalization. Uh, she says it would not be too hard to change, but there's no reason to. They're not worried about these doors, since no one can enter from the outside up here anyway. Sid and Guillaume carried all my art and craft supplies from the boat. It took them a lot of trips. While they did, I checked out the weird mechanisms in the middle and top floors. Bam! The middle floor has two circular rails in the center room with the chair in the middle. In the front there of the chair is a panel and a crank that rotates the chair and also can move vertical posts around the tracks if you throw switches on the panel locked the post... Uh, to lock the post to the chair. Sorry. Uh, it's strange how it works. The crank always rotates the chair, but it only moves a post if you throw a lever for that post while it's in front of the middle- while it's in front of the chair. Okay, oh, okay, okay. So you gotta be, yes, tracks, okay. Maybe it was some kind of map room. Quite possibly. As I sat in the chair and looked around thinking about the eclipse story Dad told last night, it occurred to me that I could be the Earth in the chair. And the near track could be the moon, and the far track could be the sun. Yes, we're looking at Aristotle's uh, geocentric universe. The sun doesn't go around the Earth, of course, but it looks like it does. When I had all my supplies, I asked Sid to help me build a model for fun. I blew up balloons and then used paper and glue to make big paper mache spheres. Paper mache sun and moon, tracks, chair. A smaller one I painted looked like the moon, and a bigger one I painted yellow to make the sun. We put them on top of the posts, on the rails, and Sid wired a light inside the yellow sphere so the sun can shine. Now we can sit in the chair and move the sun and moon, and when the moon gets in between, it eclipses the sun. Nice. We can also move... Yeah, here we go. The moon around and see all its phases from the sun shining on it. 
It gave Sid an idea for the combination lock, the dials locking the drop ladder to the top floor. He said we should make them star constellations. Mom told Sid there are 88 constellations, but throughout the year the sun and moon only pass through 12 of them, called the Zodiac, which is where the Greeks got all of their uh, astrology from, of course. So I painted the 12 Zodiac constellations around the room, and the combination to drop the ladder is now the constellations that are blocked by the moon in each moon phase shown on the dials. The key you need to work... Er, yeah, the key you need to work it all out is which constellation is blocked by the sun. If the sun isn't in the right place, the moon phases won't block the right constellations to open the lock. I'm not going to write here what constellation the sun should be in, though. That wouldn't be secure. <laughs> oh man, no, you've already you've already given us. All right, and that's it. So these are these are all of our uh, constellations. Boom. This this all actually looks quite lovely. Oh yeah, here are the. Oh, we can dig it. One moment, one moment. This is all so cool. Okay, okay. Oh, wrong way. Sun. S sun. Oh, does that not... Okay, one moment. I just gotta go back to these. Okay. Oh! Passed it out. We, we, we do not believe that's the combination, actually. We're gonna go back. We, we're we gonna... Okay, so... So, dude... We're supposed to... Work this doodle. We'll go down here real quick to... Block this constellation with the sun upstairs. Okay. So, block Gemini with the sun upstairs. Gonna go up here. Uh, hit up this fool. Okay, we see, we see what's going on here. Okay, one moment. So, I'm just gonna go over here to the sun. Ah, nice! Okay, we can auto link up. Um. Okay. Oh wait. Yeah. Now we just. Bam. Look at that bacon sizzle. Whoa. What's this? Okay. So Gemini is indeed... Indeed blocked. But... We are entirely uncertain of exactly... Uh, constellation... Oh, oh, oh! That are blocked by... The moon... In each phase shown on the dials... Okay. So, so two two seconds. We're gonna we're gonna go. Sorry, it was a little confusing at first. We've got it now. Let's moon it up. All right. Or do we go even further? No, no, okay, okay. Okay, we see what's going on. Alright. Okay, okay. So, here. Just 
Which one's that one? We legit do not... Whatever. Uh... So... We're gonna say... That one... Then... That one... Then we go back... Come on now. Come on. Okay. Okay. Nope. Okay. That's that one. Uh, this one. Okay. And then... Finally. Come on now. Oh yeah. Teach us the way. Uh, that one. <laughs> Are we sure? I mean, clearly. That's the woobly boop, right? That is indeed the woobly boop. Do we do it the other way around? Now we have become very confused. Wait. You're the... Okay. That still doesn't work. Uh, well, it's probably... Now, this is... This is just our, uh... Our, our first general inclination. It's probably because we suck. Just... You know... That's probably the reason. <laughs> oh, jeez. Only sun moon only passes. Sorry, painted the twelve zodiac around the room. Combination to drop the ladders. Now the constellations that are blocked by the moon in each phase shown on the dials. On the dials. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Is that a dial? Is that what we're calling that? Wait. Oh my god. Okay, wait. So first of all, wait. Are we... We must seem remarkably stupid right here. Sir, so I painted the 12th. But which order do we go in? Oh my god. Let's block the right constellations. But which direction do we go in? That's the question we have for you. That's the question. Which direction? So, so we're, we're actually gonna go with this the, the other way okay so so the electricity comes from here right right electricity comes from there 
We have the sun in the right spot. We... She had the moon... Back here? Uh, this is annoying us super hardcore. You know what? We're... Uh, this... This is... This is probably the... The least clear... We've had. So... First of all, Gemini will say. Okay. First of all, Gemini. It's like really annoying how they don't really give us very clear directions there, but whatever. Okay. Bam. That one. Oh, geez. Are those the... Okay, yes. Next. I'll try this one more time. Before we give up and cry. Wait, seriously? Wait. It. Mm. <sighs> okay, no, no, we're good. We're good. Sagittarius is the one. Okay. So maybe our eyes just aren't very good. Like, that is becoming a distinct possibility. Jeez. Even though at this point it's literally just a matter of numbers. Okay, so now weird squid squibble. Okay. So far... Oh my god. Light on that side. Oh my god, wow, we just revealed to the world that we are the densest person in the world. Um, we're sorry guys, this is very embarrassing. Because we haven't been looking at what the actual buttons themselves are. Yes, we have shown ourselves to be the smart, the... Oh, so smart. Oh my god. <sighs> Learn from our mistakes, kids. Don't be dumb like we are. Go to school. Do your homework. Foster good relations with your academic adjudicators. And... For the love of all gods, please. Please. Don't do what we just did. It'd be ultra stupid. Oh, this is kind of cool now. Alright. So if you liked what you saw and you're excited to see more of our floundering around and our discovery of science... To show you that we would definitely not be these guys who discovered all of these proto-scientific values. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, do all that awesome stuff to support the channel that we love to see. And please consider uh, going on down to the description and hitting up our Patreon and pledging even just a dollar a month. We do a lot of content, especially on World Anvil these days. With a lot of cool fiction stuff and world building. and We're going to try to get back into regular philosophy articles and current events and stuff on Patreon soon. 
So yeah, have a great day, stay safe, stay inside, save lives, and remember, of course, the Black Lives Matter. Bye-bye.